London, September 1930. The young policewoman stood in the corner of the room. Plain whitewashed walls, a heavy door, a wooden table with two chairs, and one small window rendered the room soulless. It was a cold afternoon, and she had been in the corner since coming on duty two hours ago, her only company the rumpled and bent girl sitting in the chair that faced the wall. Others had come into the room to sit in the second chair. First, Detective Inspector Richard Stratton, with Detective Sergeant Caldwell standing behind him, then Stratton standing, while a doctor from the Maudsley Hospital sat before the girl, trying to get her to speak. The girl, her blood-stained dress, hands and face showing a month's worth of dirt, was now waiting for another person who had been summoned to question her, a Miss Maisie Dobbs. The policewoman had heard of Maisie Dobbs, but with what she had seen today, she wasn't sure anyone could get this young scrubber to talk. The door opened and Stratton came in, followed by a woman she presumed to be Maisie Dobbs. Wearing a plain burgundy suit with black shoes and carrying a worn black leather document case, the visitor smiled at the policewoman in a way that almost startled the woman as her eyes met the midnight blue eyes of Maisie Dobbs, psychologist and investigator. Pleased to meet you, Miss Chalmers, said Maisie, though they had not been introduced. Brr, it's cold in here, added the investigator, turning to Stratton. Inspector, can we bring in an oil stove, just to take the edge off? Stratton inclined his head at the unusual nature of the request. Good, thank you, Inspector. Maisie Dobbs removed her gloves before pulling a chair around so that she was seated not opposite the girl, but close to her. Strange, thought Chalmers, as the door opened and a constable brought in a small paraffin stove, which he placed by the wall. Thank you, said Maisie, smiling. Now, sitting alongside the girl, Maisie said nothing. She said nothing for some time, so that after a while Chalmers wondered what in heaven's name she was there for. Then she realized that the Dobbs woman had closed her eyes and had changed her position slowly. It was as if she were talking to the girl without opening her mouth, so that the girl leaned toward Maisie Dobbs. Blimey, Chalmers thought. She's going to talk. I'm getting warmer now. It was a rounded voice, a West Country voice a farm girl. But Maisie Dobbs said nothing, just opened her eyes and smiled. Then she touched the girl's hand, taking it in her own. The girl began to cry and, very strange again, thought Chalmers, the Dobbs woman didn't reach out to put an arm around her shoulder. No, she just sat and nodded, as if she had all the time in the world. Then she surprised the policewoman again. Miss Chalmers, Would you be so kind as to poke your head around the door and ask for a bowl of hot water, some soap, two flannels, and a towel, please? Chalmers gave a single nod and moved toward the door. A bowl of hot water was brought to the room along with the flannels, soap, and towel. Maisie removed her jacket and rolled up the sleeves of her cream silk blouse. Reaching into the bowl, she rubbed some soap on a wet flannel and squeezed out the excess water. Then she lifted the girl's chin, smiled into her reddened and bloodshot eyes, and began to wash her face. She washed her arms, holding first her left hand in the hot flannel and working the cloth up to her elbow, then reaching for the girl's right hand. The girl flinched, but Maisie showed no sign of noticing the movement, instead massaging her right hand with the cloth, gently working it along her arm to the elbow, then rinsing again. The girl spoke again. You've got right soft hands, miss. Maisie Dobbs smiled. Thank you. I used to be a nurse. What's your name? Avril Jarvis, miss. Where are you from? Taunton, miss. She began to sob. Maisie Dobbs reached into the black bag and brought out a clean linen handkerchief, which she placed on the table in front of the girl. How old are you, Avril? Fourteen next April, I reckon. Maisie smiled. Tell me, why are you in London and not Taunton? Avril Jarvis sobbed continuously, but she did answer the question along with every other question put to her over the next hour, at which point Maisie said that that was enough for now. She would be taken care of and they would speak again tomorrow. Only Detective Inspector Stratton would have to hear her story too. The girl nodded and said, 
All right then, just so long as you'll be with me, miss. Yes, I'll be here, don't worry. You can rest now, Avril.